How hard is Formula E? It's the hardest thing I've ever done. <laughs> to stay in Formula E as a rookie is tough. Mentally and physically is extremely demanding. Don't talk to me, anyone. No one talk to me. I don't want to f***ing hear it. It's super high intensity, uber competitive. There's no series like Formula E. It's sink or swim. Yeah! is about to dawn at the 2023 Hankook Mexico City e -Prix. We have new teams, a brand new electric race car and new drivers. A rookie is a debutant, basically. Somebody who's cutting their racing teeth in a specific series. Both the new additions this season are great guys. Sasha is such a warming character. Excited? Nervous? Ex not nervous, but well, a little bit nervous, yeah, but extremely excited, that's for sure. <laughs> JQ is also another really nice addition to the paddock. Very dedicated, literally will be in the sim for hours and hours and hours and hours before a race to make sure he's as most prepared as he can be. It's a cliche, but pressure is a privilege. If there is that much pressure involved, it's because you're doing something that's so motivating and so enjoyable to you that you want it so bad. Why would you see it as a negative? First qualifying session in Mexico City. Lotterer improves to go quickest. Buemi is up. Fenestras third. Fenestras third in the Nissan. Sasha Fenestras, 10 out of 10, did not see that coming at all. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No! Sasha is another one of those anomalies where somehow you can be the loveliest guy in the world off the track, but on it, you fight like a banshee. <laughs> Beautiful teamwork, Jack. I'm competing in everything, even in, in the normal life, and especially in the race weekends, you know, once we put the helmet on, uh, I'm kind of a different person. Oh, man, what an idiot. Yeah, you know, the adrenaline takes over, and, and sometimes you get a bit, uh, a bit angry with some things. I'm extremely competitive, definitely. It's a pretty big deal for young talent to secure seats in Formula E. You get that seat out of merit and merit alone. That's a rapid lap from Jake Hughes. The kid's non-stop. So impressive. Can he guarantee a front row start for McLaren? Hughes is fractionally ahead. Dennis out of the peril tada. Oh, oh, big slide from Hughes. Lose There's time six there. thousands between them. He's lost it. Across the line, Dennis is through. Dennis does it. So Hughes will be third on the grid for his Formula E debut. Hey there. Good job, boys. Good job, everyone. Quite happy with that, to be honest. I'll have a coffee, yeah, come on. I'm going to get this cup out, because is this the one that uh, your face appears on when it gets warm? <gasps> that is the worst photo I've ever seen of myself, and I hate it. I hate that photo. Yeah, it's not good. <laughs> I think with racing, because I was naturally good at it straight away, it was just like, I fell in love with it. One, because of the speed and the adrenaline of it, but two, because I knew I was good at it. There's a huge amount of pressure that comes with hiring a new driver because this is not something you want to get wrong. You're obviously, A, committing a huge amount of time, a huge amount of budget, um, and a huge investment into a new driver. So picking a driver can be a bit of a gamble, but it can also massively pay off, as we've seen with the likes of, say, Jake Dennis when he arrived in his rookie season. And it's victory in Valencia for Jake Dennis, his first win in Formula E. I don't think I would have got to where I've got to, you know, the difficulties and the hurdles that I've had to get over to get to this point if I didn't believe that I was good enough to be at this level. Now the real work starts. We're in position. New era of Formula E about to get underway. I think there's one thing that all rookies have in common when they start in Formula E, and that is saying how difficult it is. You're up against 21 world-class drivers. It's sink or swim. If someone's not up to the job, they shouldn't be there. I know it's a tough thing to say, but it's a reality. You should not be there. And we go green in Mexico City. It's a very good start from Jake Hughes in the orange McLaren. Fenestras has now dropped down to sixth place. Now here's the grassy Verline and Hughes all fighting over that second spot. Fenestras has now dropped out of the point. Guys, I should have attacked. We are nowhere, man. There is a huge amount to take on board. It's very different to any other racing series. Whoa, Lotter of forces in around the outside. Hughes drops down to fifth. Jake Dennis starts Gen 3 
of Formula E with a superb dominant win. Fenestrad's finished 15th, Hughes finishing 5th. It's his first race as a rookie. Yeah. You have to give it to him, a top five, leaving here a huge amount learned. Well done, everyone. Cracking race, mate. Cracking first race. It's just all, <laughs> he would never stand there like that. Close, nearly there. Close, nearly there. That's not a rookie. No, because he survived. He survived? He's old. He's five. What do you need to do? I think Dan Tickton was the only rookie to carry over from season eight to season nine because of his raw speed. That's a rapid lap from Dan Tickton. Remarkable performance. It's not a guarantee that you get to have a race seat the next year. It can be very brutal for rookies. I mean, we saw that last year, where two out of the three rookies that season are gone. I think the feelings I had in season eight as a rookie, I was pretty excited to race predominantly on street circuits. They're just more difficult. Why does this happen to me today? Uh, honestly, mate, I, for sport, that's my head in sometimes. I think any advice, I think building momentum is quite key. If you're a big manufacturer, you haven't got time to wait more than a few races. And if they haven't performed after a few races or, or you can't see a steep enough trajectory, I just think they think, OK, we'll go and get another professional driver. Being a rookie in Formula E is pretty tough, to be honest. You just have to do it. <laughs> this is the third round of the season here in Diria. Hughes is about to head out. He will be up against Mitch Evans. Here we go then, the battle of the pole position. Hughes still ahead, but the gap comes down a little. Now it's gone up a bit to a tenth of a second. It all comes down to the final corner in the battle for pole. Hughes! Yes. Come on! <laughs> yes! Jake Hughes, I mean, that was just phenomenal. Oh, I'm buzzing, to be honest. I'm, uh, I'm still trying to calm down. Um, yeah, like P3 in Mexico, P2 yesterday, P1 today is a nice trend. To actually achieve it in my third third race in Formula E is pretty special. It's really funny when you talk to Jake Hughes about the start of the season because he didn't have massively high expectations for himself. And he said to me, at that point, his mindset completely changed because he was like, I haven't just got to learn Formula E now. I could win the championship. <laughs> Unfortunately for him, he got a bit of a reality check a few races later. Jake Hughes, after a strong start to the season, is out of the Hyderabad E Prix. Here we go then. It's time for qualifying. Fenestraz is lined up at the end of the pit lane. Both of these drivers looking for their first pole position. Fenestraz is looking set. Two corners to go. Out across the line. Who will take their first pole in Formula E? It's Fenestraz. That's how we do it, baby. Your first pole position in Formula E. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Yeah, very happy. When we spoke earlier on, I, honestly, I didn't thought I was going to be here standing. So, yeah, very happy for the team. Also, it's been ahead of the start of the season. Formula E is about success. Now, success isn't necessarily only going to be about wins and podiums. It's going to be about extracting performance from the car, being good in qualifying, just doing what you can with a slightly less competitive package. Monaco is the crown jewel, isn't it? It's the one everyone wants. I've raced here five times now, and I have to say the novelty never wears off. It's always a very special race. It was one of the races that I felt the most confident on because it's a track that I raced in the past twice in Formula Renault. I even won both of those years, so I know it pretty well. It's probably the only race in the year when it's not about points. It's about glory, and it's about legacy. The final in the battle for pole position. Jake Hughes versus Sasha Fenestras. Both of us rookies racing for Paul in Monaco. That was really cool to see. Hughes is ahead by four hundred. Oh, Hughes too deep. Hughes has thrown it away. Oh. Oh, mate. Well, I don't know what happened there. That final was special. Two rookies battling out in Monaco. Everything about that is just phenomenal, and kudos to them. That's ball position. Muchacho, muchacho. 
Huge congratulations. You're second pole position. Although I hate to break this to you, you are under investigation for a technical infraction due to some sort of power release. Hey, 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 hey. Let's wait and see. Let's wait and see. Right. Oh, well, Finastris is something. under investigation for me. We don't know really what. Awesome. Even though it was taken away, it was out of my control. It's not something that I did wrong. So for me, I still look at it like a god pole position. Starting on pole was unbelievable. And we go green in Monaco. Jake Hughes leading. Fenestras second. Nato third. Tickton fourth. Gunter fifth. Jake Hughes has activated attack mode, so Sasha Fenestras into the lead. OK, mate, let's just stay calm. Oh, whoa! Gunter is trying to pass Tictum, and Tictum's blocked him. Honestly, you should really ban this guy. I literally could not do anything. The car was uncontrollable. Dennis sends it and gets ahead of Fenestras. We are not good at strategy, I'm sorry. Cassidy wins in Monaco and moves to the lead of the World Championship. Sasha Fenestras finishing in fourth position. Pole man Jake Hughes only finishing in fifth. Tictum finishing in sixth position. It's such a shame. It was going so well. I saw it on the TV and I was like, if they do me for that, I'm quitting racing because it's, it's so blatant that he just drives straight to the back. Basically, at the time Gunter comes to sort of pass me, it looks like I try to, but actually it's my wing coming off and completely going under the wheel. So it jammed my steering like that. And obviously the stewards saw that and I didn't get a penalty for it. So everyone's saying, oh, dangerous driving, deliberately this, deliberate. It's just ridiculous. People just need to shut up, to be honest. In the bigger picture, being quick is only one part of what's required of you. This is a marketing front at the same time. Manufacturers. They need to know that they have a driver that is going to be on brand and be a good ambassador for the team. And that's the side of things that perhaps Dan isn't as good at as other drivers. <laughs> so annoying, man. <laughs> I will put my hands up and say I don't help myself. I think it's a couple of times this year, the radio was probably a bit on the uh, fruity side. For sake. Oh, well, was don't talk problem. to me, anyone. No one talk to me. I don't want to hear it. Roberto, if you're on the intercom, tell my taxi to be ready in 15 minutes. I'm getting out of here. <laughs> it's a really tricky one to kind of pin down whether how Dan is is good or bad for him. Because on the media side, it's pure entertainment. Bro, 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 bro. That is sketchy as f Dan Tickson's an animal. <laughs> but a good animal, my kind of animal. Tickton's still ahead as it stands. Oh, it's a big oh! slide! F sake! Oh. I want to see, I want to see that angle coming up. Yeah, go, 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 come. Do quite like it. That is. <laughs> but ultimately, when it boils down to it, Dan Tickton is one of the quickest drivers over one lap in Formula E. That's for sure. Tickton's in there again now. Yeah, you would never put him in front of a sponsor. The thing for me is, what, what can I do to sort of help myself? Should I be the driver that's got a personality and is interesting? Because obviously at the moment, they're just churning out PR media robots, which I can be if I had to. I'm sort of in two minds. Do I sort of spend my career and being myself, or do I just sort of play the game? I do feel like if I was given a chance in a more competitive car, I could quite easily replicate what Jake's done this season. In terms of fulfilling the whole package, I think both the rookies this season have done really well at that because Sasha is just a very professional character, nice to be around, gives a lot when it comes to media. Uh, first poll, Oh, yeah. Hopefully not the last one. <laughs> Jake Hughes is very McLaren. <laughs> He's much better at playing the game than I am. He's a, a very employable character and he's fast as well. Overall, I'm very happy with what I achieved, you know, two pole positions. You know, I'm no longer a rookie. I can't lean on that excuse anymore. So now it's about getting those results. We're Neil McLaren, we should be fine for championships. I'm gonna miss it <laughs> to be called a rookie <laughs> because, yeah, it's different, you know, when you perform 
good is considered amazing. And having the opportunity to re-sign with a manufacturer like Nissan, it's kind of a dream. I'd like to win the championship. I haven't got a set time or season that I want to do it. But, you know, I'd like to be winning pretty soon, yeah.